All right, so I have done my sketches based on my high quality reference. I have chosen the one I want to do. So now I am going to crop down to it using the crop tool. I'm gonna cut my proportions. I'm choosing the, the landscape vision that I most believe in. And I can give myself a little space. Then hit return. And now I am going to say image, image size and make this high quality resolution. So right now, like if you just did a screen grab of your sketchbook, it's gonna be similar to this. The screen resolution is 72 pixels per inch. It's only like three by four inches. So I'm going to force it to be 11 by 14 or larger. So I'm going to take the, the height and make that 14. And then I see that the width is then less than 11 or fewer than 11. So I'm gonna up that to 11. And because this lock is on, it's gonna keep it proportional. So my image is gonna be 11 inches by 14.892 inches. And my resolution, we're gonna use our standard lab resolution, which is 50 pixels per inch higher than professional resolution. That's 350 pixels per inch. Notice it will blur things out a little bit because the computer is making a lot of pixels, right? It went from 57 megabytes to 268. But it's okay if it's blurry because this is just my blueprint. It's just my plan for how I bring things in. Next, I'm going to use my move tool. And this is something new we haven't done before. And I'm going to click on the ruler and then drag down guides these little blue lines all the way around my cropped image. And these become my new image borders. Okay, so this image is larger than 11 by 14 at 350 pixels per inch. It's cropped down. And now I'm going to go to image canvas size. This is new. And I'm going to make my canvas size basically my paper much larger. I'm going to make it 40 inches uh, tall because mine is a portrait format. 40 inches tall, 30 inches wide. And if it was landscape format, I would make it 30 inches tall and 40 inches wide, growing from the center. Say okay. So basically what this does is this gives me working space around my composition. And when I use layers, I'm actually going to make a new layer. I'm going to say edit fill with middle gray, 50% gray. And then I'm gonna move that behind my sketch so that within my file, I'm working on a gray desk, right? And this is where I'm gonna arrange all my my composite materials like a collage. And then this is where I'm gonna composite them together into my vision. And that way I don't have a lot of things that are out of sight. So once you get to this point, I want you to save it. File, save as. And these are no longer the sketches, this is your assignment. Okay, now I'm ready to start bringing in some of these references. So number one, that was my coral tower right here, drag and drop, bring it in. It's gonna come in at full resolution. Look how big it is. It's big and beautiful, bigger than it needs to be. That's perfect. I can hold down shift to, to lock its proportions. And then I'm gonna bring it in roughly the size I want it, right? And then hit return. Now, just like when we did this with the cartoon jumble, it comes in as a smart layer. And as a smart layer, it won't let me delete from it, right? As a smart object. So what do I do? I can rasterize and then delete from it, but I'm gonna show you another technique, which is even better for this. I, I already know the elements I want, right? I'm gonna overshoot it a little bit. I want all of this. as my tower. So I make kind of a rough cut of it. And then instead of deleting everything around it, I'm going to hit Command J. And watch what happens with my layers. So I hit Command J, and then I turn off the layer behind, and it automatically rasterizes.
So let me show you that. So that way I have my smart object. If I need to resize it, it will still keep in clear resolution. And then I have my rasterized cutout. And that rasterized cutout, I'm just going to keep off to the side. And because it's rasterized, I can cut it out some more if I need to. And notice it gives me plenty of excess because we want overlap. Okay, now you might as well work from the background forward. So let me bring in my reference for the sky. And we have two of them, right? So number five, I can just bring in as is. I don't need to cut it out because it's just behind everything. And notice it's already about the size I want. So I can keep that up here, just hit return. And then I might as well rasterize that so I can blend it later. And then number four, that's gonna come in on this side. And I'm going to shrink that down a little bit, hold down shift to lock those proportions. It's going to go about there. Right? Go ahead and rasterize that. So that's the background. Some combination of these two. So push them off to the side. We've got them. If you want to, you can label them. What's nice is um, once you bring them in as smart layers and rasterize them, they'll come in with your numbers already as their layer. But for this, I might call this my... So once we bring in this high resolution reference, you can decide how to organize it. But we're just gonna keep bringing in the elements. So then I have the mountains. I'm working from the background forward. So number three, bring that in. Now these mountains have their own sky, but I'm gonna cut that out. And I don't need the mountain to be that large. Because remember, this is the right resolution. This is 11 by 14 by 350. I don't need larger than that. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in with Command Plus. I can hold down Spacebar to move around once I'm zoomed in. And I'm going to do a rough cutout with my lasso. Get lots of overlap. And then I'm going to hit Command J. And then turn off the layer underneath. And then next, I have the, uh, the water, number six here. Bring that in. It's nice and big. And now what aspects of that do I need? I think I'm going to use that coastline, right? So I want it about that size, but I'm going to kind of cut out a fair amount of it. So just this little portion and then hit Command J just to soften those hard edges. Yep, that'll work. Okay. So those are going to kind of fit together. And lastly, I need the, the foreground here, these rocks. Bring that in, shrink them down, hold down shift to lock proportions. They're going to go right about there. Hit return. Now let's see. I might actually want this, uh, this kind of bluff in the back. I'm going to do just a simple rough cut, about like that, and then hit Command J, and then turn off the smart layer. Okay, now at this point, we're doing well. I've got my six main elements. I have them kind of rough cut out. I'm going to take all my smart layers, the smart objects, which you can tell with the little icon, and they're turned off. I'm going to move those to the bottom. 
and I'm going to organize my remaining layers, right? Uh, starting with the background layer. So I'm going to start with the sky that's furthest back, number five, and I'm going to move that down oops, to the back, and then I'm going to move it into place. So think about like that. It's good to overshoot your, your borders a little bit in case you want to expand them. Next, I'm going to take number four, the sky, move that into place. And I'm thinking, let's see, how big? About like that. And already I'm thinking about how I can kind of merge these two together. Right. Then what's next? And as I go, I can label, I'm going to mark these green. I've placed them. So next is number three. Actually, number two, I think I'm going to put in next. It's the next furthest thing back, this mountain. And I can figure out where that goes. About there. Mark it green. Move it behind. Then I have the water on top of that. Mark it green. Move it into place. And then I have the coral tower on top of that. I think I'm going to need to shrink it a little bit. Remember, I've got the source file it comes from. So I don't need to be too afraid of making these kind of changes. And then lastly, the rock line in the front gets tucked in right there. Okay, so that is stage one. I'm going to hit Command S to save it. I've got my different references piled on top of each other. And I can play with moving the coral tower up on top like that. And I can play with turning off seeing what ocean I actually want, All right? Might be a combination of the two. And what sky I actually want. And now I can kind of arrange these things a little bit differently than my sketch. Now that I have my actual reference in, like I might move my mountain up a little bit, which moves the coastline up a little bit. I can stretch this up a little bit. And I can even play with kind of crossfading, taking the opacity down and seeing what kind of sky effects I might actually want. Right. So there's lots, lots of options. Okay, now this is where we want to get by the end of today. Right, So we have about an hour and a half of class time to get to kind of rough cutting it together so that there is no blank space left and finding our elements. And notice that I have a lot of overlap. So in the next video, I will start refining the edges now. Before I change colors, before I, I play with lighting, I'm just going to refine the edges a little bit. Like I don't need these the bright blue sky here. So I can just delete it, right? And uh, we'll talk about all the different selectings and, and smart ways to delete. And then where you clean it up by hand and start compositing these edges together. But right now I just want the rough cuts there. And this will be the basis of my composition. Now, for fun, I might add other textures later, but this is, these are the main components.